welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host, as always, is... Hello, I am Namio. Yay, Namio! Yay, so, me. So this week, this week I actually, I put out a little uh, uh, reaction clip on YouTube. Uh, because somebody that hasn't been on the show in 30 plus years made his return in one of the most unexpected ways I could have considered. I honestly did not. I knew he was coming. I just didn't know how. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, yeah, but we will get to him momentarily. Heather Weber is, oh. is has gone... As we've mentioned before, she has gone from just, oh, hello, Weber, aren't you just adorable, aren't you just funny, to holy shit, bitch, be crazy, dangerous. And At the same time, I'm like, for the love of God, Heather, shit or get off the pot. <laughs> Seriously. You've been holding a heart Carly captive and, like, fucking with her head and telling her over and over again that you're going to kill her. For like three weeks now, shit or get off the pot. <laughs> that is a term I don't think I have ever heard used outside of you know the actual context, outside of normal context. <laughs> but I, I I agree, you know, it's like it's like do something, you know. But at the same time, she's been able to cover her ass enough to where she could do this. And, that, and apparently she has a, an inexhaustible supply of uh, the same kind of knife. Yes. Kitchen knife. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, who knows? Maybe, maybe that could answer a question why they don't find her fingerprints on the knife that the police have. Because it was a different knife. She got a different knife to use for her daily things or whatever and kept the knife. But even then... When is, wasn't she wearing gloves when she tried to stab Carly? I don't even remember. I mean, I would have thought uh, she was. I'm not going to lie. But, but, oh, no, no, we'll, we will definitely find out. But I've noted that the reason why she's able to do this and toy with Carly for so long is because she is quite dangerously genre savvy. That's true. It's, oh, God. And making the kids believe in the chupacabra is just, <laughs> wow. Those kids... <laughs> Did she like the fact that she was ready, like and fully prepared to trick those kids into murdering Carly for her? I'm like, God damn, she is old. She is like, holy shit, Heather. Ah, <laughs> uh, wow. I mean, I, I mean, I've, I've known Heather has been crazy and, and and psycho, but I've not known her to stoop to this kind of level. So, I, yeah, I was glad when they both chickened out and ran away. Yeah. Although, to I was be like, fair, that's sleek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, maybe that's what she was counting on. I don't know. Of course, now <laughs> there are the kids' fingerprints on that knife, so... Oh, yeah. that's true! Ooh, yeah. I hadn't thought of that. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's the way she could get out of it if she actually goes through with it. Um, yeah, my fingerprints are not on that knife. And that is not Luke Spencer sitting in my chair. <laughs> yes, we finally know where Luke is, because, you know, her goons just gussied him up, looked like her in a straight jacket, and you know, put him in her room, you know? Uh, Although, you know, I I kept, you know, being stupid, because uh, I knew she wasn't going to do it. I kept, like, talking to the screen, I'm like, T go look at her, go look at her face, Kiki, go, no, of course you're not, of course you're not going to because, of course, you're not going to. Right. Uh, of course. And, yeah, and of course, the reason why Kiki was there in the first place is she's trying to get evidence to basically exonerate Franco, who has been captured and locked up. Yeah, because Kiki figured out that it's Heather. Mm -hmm. Like, she she figured out it's got to be Heather. Yeah. Uh, she was just trying to prove it, and now she's like, I guess Franco must be must have been right but Franco has to be figuring this out about right about now because the they uh so I guess backing up uh he was running around trying to hide and finally he went to Kevin who ratted him out to the cops and you know what 
good on Kevin because yeah you know when your client has already admitted to you that he murdered someone and now he is wanted by the police for kidnapping a second person that's when doctor patient confidentiality stuff uh, goes away and you are now obligated mm. to turn him in. Yep. So Kevin, for his part, he was just doing his job. Yeah. I don't think he enjoyed doing it. <laughs> but, no, not at all. No, but he did He did what he had to do. Although I do like the... I, I know it was the, the, the lady that was in there while Franco was hiding out in there. I don't remember her name. I don't remember Tina. the... I don't remember the actress's name. I know she's supposed to be like some other notable actress that had the, like the guest stint that was insane <laughs> I, mean, I mean it's like you got you got her and they're being all OCD and then Franco he has a little bit of it himself <laughs> it's like I, well, I, and I, I love that he's like oh CD OCD <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you have OCD oh uh, which which, if somebody said that to you in your OCD, you'd, you'd probably be a little unsettled. Like, yeah, I do. What's it to you? Um, <laughs> yeah. But it's it's just it was really well done. I, I I thought it was done very entertaining. And and the person he the person Kevin went to was of course Scott, with the DA, and he wanted to do right by Lucy, who hopped right back into bed with Scott. Yes. Because goddamn it, Lucy, can you not keep? Can you not put your legs around that man, at least while you're married to Kevin? <laughs> or at the very least, the three of you get together, talk, maybe work out an arrangement, you know? While Kevin's off in, you know, maybe Kevin goes off to Seattle to see some patient or whatever, what, which, which in hindsight, I wonder, I'm, I'm willing to bet that the patient is either Noah Drake or uh, Lucas. Okay. It could be either one of those. But, uh, but who knows? Maybe it's neither of them. But, <laughs> oh God. It's, it's like, yeah, well, I'm off doing my thing, you know, you, you, you have all the sex with Scott, just come home to me, you know, but that would, but that would be, you know, in a perfect written world, and probably not, well, okay, that could have its own little dramas as well, but it's not the drama that people will be considering, either, I don't think, so, <sighs> which, I which, speaking of which, I, I, I got a little look at some of the stuff in the, uh, the discussion community that I follow on Facebook, where I actually posted my little reaction video, and somebody was like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they, they kind of enjoyed it. They were glad this character is back. And in this same group, there was somebody complaining that that a Kelly Monaco, who plays Sam, has, has, has like a very limited wardrobe. And it's like, so what? You know, so does Sunny. You know, I was going to say, most of the characters have a pretty limited wardrobe. Yeah. A lot of the time it's justified because several episodes take place over the same day, you know, in universe. Yeah. So it's a little justified there. And you know what? Maybe the character, you know, and even the actress, because I understand she does similar things off screen as well. Maybe that's just the style she likes, you know? And somebody was like, oh, well, she's just she, she's showing off her breasts because she's the only one with breasts. It's like, maybe she likes showing off the girls. You ever think of that? You know, women are allowed to be proud of their tits. But then, you know, it, 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 Lies! All lies! No, they are. <laughs> and somebody even noted that Alexis was kind of cleavagey this week. It's, yes, yeah. she was. And uh, she was underneath Julian. Oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, that that does not escape us at all. Which I gotta say, that was kind of hot. <laughs> you know, just the whole seduction scene. You know, you know, almost seduction scene, and Alexis being so smitten and and awkward is it's. Like, she is. A, I can't resist you. Oh. She is so adorable when she gets that way. Because <laughs> uh, like, God damn it, I'm being seduced by another mobster. Yeah, and I'm trying to get away from it. Okay. I I wonder if Nancy Lee Grant has studied Jeff Goldblum. Cuz cuz if she keeps that up, that's where she's going to be going. <laughs> that's the next step. Next step is Goldblum. <laughs> oh my god. But the reason she was over at Julian and, and uh, Ava's place was, you know, to find Ava and talk to her. I I think it has something to do with Silas who is sitting sitting in jail. 
you know, because, you know, fucking Nate had to go and, 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 and believe everything that he's told, because I, I have my suspicions that the pharmacist, he either is lying, boldly lying, mm. or that he was given false information. <coughs> so it's... It's hard to tell. Yeah. I mean, and of course, nobody yet has considered whether or not it was fucking Stephen Clay just out there to just ruin his brother's life for whatever reason. Everybody's fixated on Ava, which is a very viable option. You know, she is very viable. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to lie. And Ava's not admitting one way or the other, it seems, you know? Yeah. Oh, uh, so yeah, she, she, apparently she is very vindictive. I mean, I mean, come on. Let, let's see. Let's see how vindictive Ava can be. Uh, oh yeah, when Kiki was outed as not a Jerome, not a Jerome, but not a quarter main. Kiki is a Jerome. Yeah. Yeah, what did what did Ava do? Oh yeah, she killed the fuck out of Connie. Yes. Not just killed her, killed the fuck out of her. And framed AJ. To the point where even AJ isn't sure he didn't do it. Yeah, although to AJ's credit, he's starting to remember and come around. So that that might start falling apart, maybe. Because <laughs> can, he can't be tried for that murder again. But yep. you can always look at Ava Jerome. Hi, Ava. You haven't been charged with this murder. Get up there. <laughs> but with the way it's looking, the way the way they're setting it up, it'll probably end up being Ava that did frame Silas. Even well, though there is there is a, enough evidence to establish motive that he could, like his wife leaving him a substantial amount in her will if she dies. Which Sam, I love you, but. You got that information from Ava. <coughs> Ava Jerome. Yeah. I know she's your aunt. I know she's family, but consider your goddamn source. And you know, of course, she confronts Silas about it, and Silas, you know, he hasn't lied to her. He has no reason to lie to her. And he says, "Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things that, from Silas's point of view, he probably didn't consider it very important." Yeah. You know. And so, of course, she gets pissed and runs off because, you know, she jumps to conclusions, which Sam, that is, that, that just does not seem in character for Sam. Not from what <laughs> I've known of her. Well, and also, I mean, she's supposed to be a private investigator. She's supposed to be open to finding evidence. Yeah. But anyone, anyone who's even tangentially related to law enforcement in this show has to suck. That I I think it's just it's just a rule. It's it is a law of this universe. And it, it, nobody typifies that more than the fucking WSB. What the fucking fuck? I mean, first of all, they get let Liesel Obrecht out <laughs> and we find out why Liesel Obrecht has been let out because, you know, information. Well, what information did she have? Well, apparently, that information is so the new head of the WSB can find out where the fuck Robin Scorpio lives because she can help revive and return fucking Helena and Stavros Kassadine. And who has that interest? Who has the interest of bringing back two of the most vile... And, and, and you, you have to admit, love to hate villains in the entire history of the show, next to possibly Cesar Faison, that would be Victor Cassadine. Motherfucker is back. He is up. He is the head of the World Security Bureau. How, yeah, the, how the fuck did that happen? I have no idea. Obviously, mm -hmm. he was incarcerated. He was presumed dead. You know, and it's always a presumption. You never know. Apparently, yeah. the actor was young enough to where he could come back and not have it be too much of a discrepancy, even though it's been... Let's see. You'll see. It was his last previous... His previous appearance was in 81. This is 2014. Um, let's see. Oh. About, about 12 and a half years, give or take. A little over 12 years, because I think that particular plot line ended in late 81. So it, it's... No, that would be... Because 81, 91... That's like, that's a long ass time, man. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at like 30, I think 32, 30, 32? Let's something see. Like that. Yeah, something like that. It's like I a little over I 32 years. Math. I, I'm, I'm mathing on the fly. But, but yeah, <laughs> it's been over three decades. 
obviously the actor, you know, I cannot pronounce his name. I'm not even going to try. But uh, he is apparently aged well. He still looks all right. I mean, obviously you have the yeah. wrinkles and everything. And I think I'm, I'm going to have to review some of the stuff that, I, that some of his original uh, scenes back in the 80s. But uh, when he introduced himself, uh, I think it was, oh, what was it? It was, it was, um, 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 oh, God damn it. Uh, he sat down. And he, he introduced himself as, as like, ah, oh shit, I had it. I had it before I started the show, and I've lost it. God damn it. It's okay. But, um, it's okay. But, yeah, it was something, and then he said, sorry, I couldn't resist. And it was like, that's probably something he used a lot in the 80s. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to review it to be sure, but, but I think that's it. It's like, that's a neat way to tie things in, you know? Yeah. Although I'm still disappointed that Faison was not flattered that anybody recognized him this time around. <clears throat> I thought that was going to be a running thing. Faison? Yeah, because or... this dates back when um, when Faison made his first re- reappearance in 1999. At one point, a character recognized who he is, and he says, You've heard of me. I'm flattered. And then, I think a couple of years ago, when Robin was originally kidnapped, you know, Robin recognized him, and he said, Oh, you remember me. I'm flattered. There was no such exchange this time around Aww. when Faison was here. I'm disappointed. You failed me. Oh, but but it seems like with Victor, with Victor, it's kind of a tie in there. And, yeah. And I, not sure how he got to be the head of the WSB. We're gonna find out. And I hope so. Yeah. And he wants Robin to help him bring back Helena and Stavros. Because which yeah, it um. There have been, uh, you know, stuff flying around about, uh, uh, you know, Robin leaving again, because, what's her name, Kimberly? Mm-hmm. Kimberly um, McCullough. Uh, you know, she has her own stuff that she's doing, which, you know, good for her. Yeah. Uh, and, the, like, everything was like, it's, you know, not to do with Sabrina, it's to do with an un, you know, a character that's, you know hasn't returned yet and so i'm like well clearly it's going to be victor cassadine and i'm like are they gonna is he gonna kidnap her again like, like dude come on really uh, uh, yeah really? i hope i mean if you're gonna like i really hope that they don't do do her being kidnapped because seriously that's getting old yeah that that would be a little on the old side but i would i would accept it if if she was kidnapped and then rescued and then left the show, I would accept that. I would ex- I, I would not accept her being full on kidnapped and leaving the show that way, especially since well they've just got Victor back. I want to see more <laughs> of him, because <laughs> when we last saw him way back in the eighties, he had learned that at, for at least one part, Miko's lied to him about their brother Tony. Because what Tony had done, he he and his uh, fiance at the time, Alexandria Quartermain, wandered into Migos's freezing chamber, and well, they became cast, they became popsicles. Uh-huh. And, and later on, Mikos was thrown into this same ice chamber by Luke Spencer. So, so there there are a few Cassidine sickles on that island. Whether or not they're viable to be brought back, we don't know yet. But eh. I mean, hey, if they were able to do cryogenics a few years later with Stavros. You never know. Although, the one thing I've always questioned, why do they not try and bring back Mikos? I mean, I know the original actor is gone. I mean, I think he died back in the early 2000s or something like that. But they can always recast him. They did it with Stavros. <coughs> they did it with Helena. Helena was originally played by Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> you can recast him. He'll be old as fuck. And you know what? That's not a big deal because Luke is coming up to his 70s. Or in his 70s. He's close. You can have that. But but apparently that ship has sailed, and now we're worried about Stavros and Helena. Oh, man. And and there's something that, that I found very, very interesting. <coughs> because Robin's father is Robert Scorpio. It has uh-huh. been canon. It, it's been pretty much everywhere. But he referred to her father as Frisco Jones. Wait a minute. Either Victor has some wrong information, or there's something there, there's something not right somewhere. I'm not sure which. I'm, yeah, I'm willing to bet I that was an I error. I didn't even on catch that. I did. Yeah. 
you know, you, you, you'd think the people who pay attention to continuity don't, don't wouldn't catch that, you guys? Come on. Come on, seriously. But that, that, I, I, I'm, I just wonder what that's going to lead into. Or if it's just a one-off, oh my, oh shit, we, we, he said the wrong goddamn name. Ah, keep it thrown in. We'll work on it later. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, yeah. And, and very secret and not even the other agents of the World Security Bureau. Not even Robert knew. Which, you know, it's weird. Mostly because if they did know, they would shit their pants and, you know, yeah. revolt. Oh, yeah. Considering he was one of the three Cassidine brothers that, what they try to do? You guessed it. Take over the world. Of course. There you go. That's your in Bison moment for the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, yeah. That, that, that's going to be very fun to see how that plays out. Oh, man. And Morgan, you know, I hate the little shit, but I've got to sympathize with him because he had a really tough choice to make this week. Because yeah. it was either Ava, who the two of them have professed their love, you know, and, and, and everything. It's between Ava or his family. And he find, he you know, he, he in the end, he chose his family because he would rather have his yeah. family, you know, alive and well. In the end, so he's coming back around. It's like about goddamn time. <sighs> but unfortunately, Ava's nursing the broken heart, and and of course Julian is questioning her about Silas on behalf of Sam, who he's trying yes. to get into the good graces with. And and of course Julian, he got the shit beat out of him. <laughs> that was awesome. By by Duke, uh, who of course Julian. Yeah, I, I gotta say it's kind of kind of clever on his part. Man, mostly you know more known for brute force. He goes to Anna and says, "Yeah, your boyfriend's been working for Sonny Corinthos." And normally Anna would dismiss it out of hand because consider your source. But then yeah. she remembered. Wait, he caught him in a. She caught him in a lie. He was on the docks when Sonny was there. He claimed he went to go visit Nicholas. Nicholas said he never came by. Hmm. I wonder. And of course she confronts Duke. Duke admits it. And and the reason why is just he wants to feel empowered. He wants to feel in control. You know, and I can understand that. I think yeah. there are better ways of doing it than working for any part of the mob. But I could understand where he's coming from. Because, I mean, he spent the good yeah. part of, let's see, he spent most of the 90s, no, all of, pretty much all of the 90s and most of the 2000s in captivity. So yeah, he's been pretty powerless all that time, and he wants to have that back. You know, I mean, you know, you know, the, the Scottish pride and and everything in him is just, yeah. He, well, and I'm sorry, but you know, Anna's like, you know, let the police handle it, and he's like, you haven't done anything, and I'm like, thank you. Yes, thank you, Duke. That that lampshade looks really good. It's a nice <laughs> color. Ah. Uh. So yeah, although, although I will admit a nit, little nit, little nitpick on on his delivery when when he angrily confesses to Anna, he says "All right," and then there's this pause. Then damn it, you know it's like it's like I, I I maybe you know maybe that's maybe he felt it was a little better, but I I would have not had that much of a pause. But again, that's nitpicking. <laughs> yeah. But that's part of what I do. Ah. Oh. <coughs> and and the, just conveniently, Victor comes back, and Robert leaves again, you know, to go help Holly with Ethan, you know, because, you know, he owes her, because she stayed at his bedside the whole time Robert was just out in a coma. And so he says his goodbyes to Anna, and, and then to Robin and Patrick, and all very nice and sweet, and and meanwhile, the kids are still looking up information on the Chupacabra, which, I gotta say, they're smart kids. You know, they, they look up this shit, and, and of course, Emma's like, well, we, we need to go to the hospital so we can ask Sabrina about the Chupacabra, because Chupacabra comes from Puerto Rico. And one thing these kids are kind of not, not, not absorbing is that these things supposedly, we, they're not real, but they supposedly go after goats. Yeah. The stables on Castadine Island are full of horses. Yes. 
Yeah, uh, that could be the one. That could be part of the flaw in Heather's plan there. And and I love how Nicholas was looking up the information. Apparently, he's rattled a little bit, not not realizing. And and I think it was Lulu comes in, says hello, puts her hand on his shoulder. He freaks. Yep. <laughs> it was hilarious. That was awesomely hilarious. And I think Elizabeth's jealous. I think Elizabeth's <laughs> jealous. Because, I mean, why else would you push somebody into the harbor? You know, well, she, she would let die the day she dies, but, you know, she pushed she pushed Britain to the harbor. And, of course, there is also... It's like there's going to be like a little competition. It's, it's like Eliz, Elizabeth and Nicholas have a friendly hug, and then Britt comes in and just snogs the hell out of him. Nicholas is looking around like, what the fuck just happened? I enjoyed it, but what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> oh, <laughs> It's like insecurities, fun, yeah. uh, and Obrecht, of course, still a bitch. You are late, Rita. Well, I got pushed in the goddamn harbor. Shut the fuck up. Excuses, <laughs> excuses. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it, there's there's a reason nobody likes Obrecht. I mean, it's one thing to be tough and be on task. That's fine, but yeah, Obrecht is just a bitch. And getting into yeah. everybody's personal life, realizing, you know, knowing Sabrina's pregnant and telling Sabrina to go see her daughter. And, you know, never mind yeah. the fact that Sabrina and Britt exa don't exactly have the best past, you know? You yeah, know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, um, Britt lied and manipulated Sabrina for months. Mm-hmm. There is no fucking way Sabrina is gonna go to Brit as her OB. That's just like Yeah, no. Just just no. I mean and and that's the thing, you gotta make time when you can, you know? And and, and if Obrecht doesn't understand that, then why the fuck are you there being a doctor? Uh well other other than the fact that well you, you I don't I don't even wanna think about what she did to Victor. Ooh. No yeah. thank you. Yeah, she's she's not too bad looking. He's aged well, but I still don't want to imagine it. Mm. <laughs> oh God. So, <laughs> so Sabrina is Sabrina uh, ends up telling Emma, or or no, Obrek lets it sl slip in front of Emma that Sabrina's pregnant, and yes. Sabrina ends up telling uh, Emma that you know the baby is Carlos is a good friend of hers from back home. Meanwhile, Elizabeth bursts in, talking to to tell Sabrina that 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 you know, you know why why are you keeping this from Patrick? You know this baby is Patrick's. While Emma is under the table getting something, and, and Sabrina's Sabrina's sitting there trying to tell her to shut the hell up. <laughs> and up comes but Elizabeth Emma. is not paying attention, and I'm like, yeah, if Elizabeth had been paying any attention at all. She would have noticed all of the children stuff laid out all over the place. Yeah, and but uh, Elizabeth uh, has kind of got her head up her ass, so it is like, oh shit! <laughs> so now her. Emma knows that uh, Sabrina's baby is Patrick's. Yep, and she's going to be asking the most uncomfortable question you could ever get from a child that you love. Why did you lie and say it was somebody else's? Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be yeah. That that's that's not gonna be comfortable at all. Oh. So Franco is as we've mentioned. Franco's in in jail. He and Silas have this nice banter. Yes. <laughs> it's great. Just to see the two of them play off of each other. You got the snark. I know. I hope. It's, the, I hope the two of them have more scenes together because they're both. They both got the snark down pat, and yes. they play off each other really well. <laughs> we need more Franco and Silas scenes, please. Ooh. Thank you. There should there should be a spinoff where the two of them are buddy cops. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Coming this summer, the streets of Port Charles <laughs> are safer now because of Robert Frank and Silas Clay, two cops. Both with the ability to snark criminals to justice. <laughs> that would be hilarious to snark that somebody. That would be hilarious. Justice. Yes. 
Oh, I, I, I love those guys. Those guys are awesome. Yes. Yes. Uh. Oh, so, oh god. And, and now Tracy has gone to the police station because in, 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 in uh, Showtime, it's been 48 hours since Luke has been missing. As we mentioned earlier, Heather, you know, got the drop on Luke and his go and her goons rather, gussied him up as her in the mental ward, so you know she can walk around and not be suspected. Hence, why well another reason why she's wearing the black wig. So that and oh seriously, like I wanted to smack Anna because mm. she was being so rude and so dismissive to Tracy, and I'm like. You could at least show some fucking concern. But, yeah. yeah. She's like, oh no, this is Luke. He's obviously fine. I'm like, yes, because there's never been a case where Luke was not fine and needed help. Yeah. I mean, that's just never happened. Oh no, uh, I'm never. Like, I'm sorry, Anna was being a real bitch for no reason. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Anna is stressed out because of everything that's going on, but come on. This is Tracy. Yeah. Who, who, who? You, you, and she have a mutual friend in Luke here. You would think you'd be a little more, more concerned about Luke, especially if Tracy is, because hi, uh, to her an item. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if the rest know. of Fort Charles just... knows this, but they're in an item. Just, just a slight item, at least. Ah, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Oh. That, that, that really, that really bugged me, because I... like, there's, there's no excuse. For that, and then and then she has the gall to get annoyed with Tracy for getting angry. I'm like, Tracy has every right to be angry. Look yeah. at the way you're treating her. It's like calm thine tits. It's like Anna, 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 Anna. I love you, doll. You know you you you're, you're great. You're you're you know grandma. What massive hotness you have. But seriously, yeah, you just need to be smacked. <laughs> just yes. Uh, and. Of course, Michael, he, he lies to Kiki, goes to see Franco, and threatens him. Because, well, yeah, I mean, he thinks Franco killed his mom, you know? I mean, I, so, I mean, yeah. his anger is justified, but Jeebus, dude! You know? Yeah, Michael's going a little crazy. Yeah. I mean, even Morgan is, is not that particularly crazy, although he's still pretty dense. I mean, yeah. it's, it's like It's like he has very little imagination. Which, hey, we demonstrated that when they found the suitcase in the car. That's true. You know, it's like, well, why would it be there? Oh, you sick fucker! And it's like, dude, <laughs> dude, look at the line of work your family is in. How could that yeah. not have crossed your mind? Even if you had been at boarding school for all of these years, dude. Yeah. Of course, Morgan, th th this is Morgan. He's the one who joined a mob family not really realizing that somebody could get hurt. Yeah. You are this an is, idiot, Morgan. Morgan is dumb. Yeah. I mean, points to him for, for you know, trying to fix things and do the right thing now. But yes. you are still an idiot. Ah. Oh, <sighs> damn. I mean, it's like... You know, I have to say, like, uh, the, the, the scenes with... Uh, him and Sonny talking. Uh, it was really nice to see people talk. Yes. Talk about shit. Yes. And you know, Sonny, despite the fact you know he had been really upset before Morgan came in, but you know he sat down and he listened and he took Morgan at his word, and I was really proud of Sonny for doing that. Oh yes, very much so. Despite the fact that Julian's like, oh, Morgan's a dead man. And it's yeah. like, no, Ava was right. Like, Sonny's not gonna kill his kids. Not gonna you know, do that. Not, not everybody is so as a cavalier about family as you are, dear. Yeah. Although, <laughs> although it was great. <laughs> oh my god, it was so great because uh, so Morgan finally breaks down and tells Ava about Julian, you know, threatening his family, mm -hmm. and you know, then he goes to talk to Sonny. And Ava is pissed. Oh Absolutely yeah, pissed at Julian. And when Julian comes home, she's got a gun. Yes, it's like bitch, be pissed. Mm. And she's 
I mean, she threatens him up one side and down the other. Yeah, and even Julian's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, I know you're a badass. Okay, okay. Let's work this out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but yeah, Ava, gotta give, gotta hand it to her. Just, just that's badass right there. Yeah. Oh, god damn. But she, she, I, I, I am going to look forward to seeing what happens when it does come to life that Ava not only was the one who shot Con, not Connie. Well, she shot Connie yeah, too Olivia. and killed her, but Olivia as well, and is trying to frame Silas, and so far doing a damn good job. Yeah. Fucking scary. Who yeah. You know, because the, the, cause as I said earlier, you know, even though there is still the possibility that it could have been Stephen, just for whatever reason, you know, maybe out of jealousy or what have you, or just you know, Stephen was a sociopathic killer. I mean, he could have just. You know, could have just wanted to hurt him because he wanted his brother to hurt like he did, you know? So, you know, it could be any number of reasons. But, you know, while that would have been great, and it would have proven that this, you know, you know, this guy who thought he was a vampire is actually still alive, even though, (laughs) you know, because I seem to remember when he was originally killed, he had a ring and the ring was missing or something like that. Or or something, so that leaves the door open. It's weird. I I would I wouldn't mind them going into the supernatural every once in a while. I mean, not overdo it like they did with like the last couple of years of Port Charles, but but Mm. go into it every now and then because there are supernatural elements in in the you know in the ABC soap verse. And and I say the ABC soap verse because they you know all four of the you know all of the shows that. We're on the air when I initially were watching, you know, All My Children, One Life to Live, GH, and Port Charles. They all take place in the same universe. Also, the same universe as Ryan's Hope, which, uh, what's her name? The, 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 the barfly, the, the, um, Kiki's grandmother person. I forget her name. But she, uh, she was. Delia. Yes, Delia, thank you. She was a character on Ryan's Hope. So, you know, they all take place in the same universe. Mm-hmm. Which, which kind of, kind of, kind of gets me going because I love you know just you know the it, it it's you know for for a, a set of soap operas just on daytime TV with minimal budget I, well at least compared to your more prime time shows of course you know they they do some decent they've done some decent world building in terms of how the shows relate to each other you know and in, in fact there was you know like when uh, Luke and Holly were you know, traipsing around looking for Obrecht, and eventually found you know found him on Cassadine Island or or what have you. And you know that was that one place where the Loving Murders took. I think is what they called it in show. Well, that's another soap opera that used to be on ABC. <laughs> so it, it all ties together. I love it. <laughs> it's like universe. It's, it, it's like continuity world building porn. For me, I love it. <laughs> oh, okay. So, and 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 speaking of continuity and and different things, teenagers had a little bit to do this week. Where um, it, it, it it quickly came out that Rafe was the one who ratted out TJ to the police, and and it looks like those bridges are crumbling faster than a cookie and milk. Because yeah, that that's kind of a serious thing. Because 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 yeah, Rafe, I will say legally speaking, you know he did the right thing, went to the cops because you know he had information for a case they were working on. Legally, that is the right thing to do. However, it's still a bit of a betrayal on on his part well, on a personal. Here's life. the thing, though, he didn't do it because it was the right thing. He did it because he wanted to undermine TJ. TJ. Right. So, and that's not okay. No. Do not do this if you're just trying to get some pussy. That is not the way to get pussy. No. Just just this just, just future reference kid. You you do this you if you're gonna do something like that, you know, do it for more purer purposes than oh my god, I like Molly, I want to bang her. Yeah. Please don't do that. You you know, you you need to be better than your father. <laughs> Because, remember, his father, sociopathic killer here. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I mean, he killed his own... I mean, hello, his father killed his mother right in front of him. You'd think you would want to avoid that. But, hey, you know, what's done is done, and... And I have to say, the music, the background music they picked for the scenes at Kelly's, is it just me, or did it seem like a video game confrontation music going on there? Yeah, I, you, it didn't make enough <laughs> of an impression. It's just... It's like, oh my god, next thing you know, we're going to have a screen wipe, and there's going to be TJ and Rafe on opposite sides of the screen shouting commands at one another and just hitting each other for hit points. That would be hilarious. That would be awesome. I would, it would be like, I would watch that. That would be awesome. It would be like a Final Fantasy General Hospital Edition. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I have to wonder, how would they make a game based off of General Hospital? You know? It would be filled with drama. Well, of course. I mean... But then again, so is, so, your, so is your typical Final Fantasy game. Huh. I suppose it could be a trivia. N name, name all of this person's sexual partners. Oh, God. And some of them it would take a while. Yes. Um, I mean, even... Well, no, not even Luke. Because I know Luke is one of the longest-running characters on the show, but I don't, I don't think he's been shown with a lot of sexual partners, so, you know. Carly, on the other hand, well, that's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> what guys say? The girl gets around. You know... And there's nothing wrong with it. Before anybody tries to accuse me of slut-shaming, there is nothing wrong with it. And I hate when the characters end up slut-shaming her for it. And it's just, don't do that. That's not cool. So, you know, you're, you're, you're well, PSA just, for this week. I, it's, and that's, that's not even, like... To, to me, that's not even slut-shaming. That's just, you know, a side effect of a show running for a really long time with mm -hmm. a limited number of characters is all of the characters wind up hooking up with all of the other characters because the writers can't figure out anything else to do. I think I've talked about the Friends before. Mm -hmm. uh, because basically that's what happened on that show. They they basically ran out of ideas and eventually in because it, it ran too long all of the characters hooked up with all of the other characters. <laughs> and it just got... It just got old after a while, but you can definitely see, um, in some, like in the character, some of the characters' backstories that you know that that is happening, and that you know Carly is one of those. Uh, Laura uh, has been married, however many times. Lucy has been married, however many times. Yeah. And it's not because you know they're promiscuous; it's because. The writers keep getting them in and out of relationships. Yeah, although Laura, I think she's been married on the screen that I know of. Um, let's see, Scotty, Luke, Stavros, even though that was technically an illegal one because Luke wasn't really dead. They just thought he was. Um, and then and then uh, Scotty again. So there was, I think, four times altogether in, yeah. over the course of the show that I can think of. Um, let's see, Lucy. <laughs> okay, she's no Erica Kane, but she's she's been married to a few guys, including Alan Quartermain. I think she was married to I know she was married to Scott for a while, and I believe she was also you know, she is married to Kevin, I think for the second time at this point. So it's it's yeah. not like it's not like she hasn't had other marriages or other relationships. And the same with Kevin, too. So so I I see your point. It's not necessarily slut shaming, although Carly She's only been on the show since, like, the late 90s, and, and probably had as many, if not more, partners. So I, it's still no room for slut-shaming. It's just she's, you know, she's a more popular character. She's been a more prominent character, so, you know, hey. Oh. So she, so, well, if she's, if she's more popular and prominent, then that gives her even more, you know, that, 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 that's even more incentive for the writers to, uh, you know, screw around with her love life and get her in and out of relationships. Because yeah. that gets eyeballs on the screen. Oh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but, again, again, I do want to stress and reiterate that um, any kind of slut-shaming that does go on, not cool. Yeah. It really is not. And, and really, none of these characters can throw stones. I mean, let's let's be honest. I mean, yeah. But whenever, whenever anybody starts to try and criticize anybody else for like having a lot of, you know, 
exes or, or having a lot of sexual partners, I'm like, I know a little bit about your backstory and you really have no room to judge. Yeah, I think I think very few people on the show would have any room to judge. Whether or not they should is a different story. But I yeah. think I think Sabrina would be one of the very few people that could judge. Very and few. She, and she wouldn't. Right. Because she's like the nicest person ever. Yeah. She's had a few missteps and hiccups along the way, and she's going to. She's human. Yeah. But she's a decent human. Although I do... I do... I have heard jokes about... I think it was Sam at one point joked that, you know... You know, Sunny walks around and, and gets women pregnant. She's like, she just turns to him and like, can you keep it in your pants for five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, I mean, it, it's slut shaming the other way because Sunny is quite a promiscuous guy himself. Yes. But the line itself is kind of funny. I, I have to admit <laughs> that. You know, yeah, you know, it, it's one of those things. Yes, something is wrong, but you can find humor in just about anything. And and that's one of those. Uh, and, of, and of course, we brought up a little bit Scott and Lucy. Lucy is still thinking, oh, God, you know, wanting to go, not wanting to go. She's, has, she's got this dilemma. You know, Scott is still nurturing his, woo, you know, his, his deck in the face from Mac. And, you know, he has to defend his best friend's honor, which, good of him, but you just, shot, you just sock the DA in the face. Yeah, that was that was not very bright on Mac's part. No, I mean, you're lucky the <laughs> DA isn't going to press charges. Although, if the DA does press charges, he would have to explain, well, why did Mac punch him in the face? Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't see Scott pressing any charges until it's to his advantage. Uh, oh, man. <sighs> so, so, let's see. Um, we've, we've got Silas, and, and we've got Sam... Um, uh, we've got the teenagers, which, yeah, that's kind of a footnote at this point, until something really big happens between them, if something really big happens between them, and who knows, with Victor coming back and wanting to bring the entire Cassidy clan with him, I, I, I say the entire Cassidy clan, but there are still others that are out there, that, mm -hmm. there was actually a couple of one-off Cassidy characters in the 80s that I, I knew about one of them, who was played by the same actor as Mikos, so then there was another one who worked with, I think it was Sean Donnelly, to bankrupt the Quartermains, like in the mid-80s. Mm -hmm. And it worked. But then, but while the Quartermains were bankrupt, they, you know, Lila came up with Pickle Lila. That got them back in the black. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, the, the whole Pickle Lila thing from last year, that's a callback to the 80s. It's like, you know, it worked once before, we'll, we'll try it again. And then Franco, you know, just apparently for the lulls and trying to get a hold of ELQ... Yeah, I'm gonna poison it. Yep. Uh, so I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> Just cause the trouble. So uh, this is gonna be a short episode. I know we've got like you ten minutes of the usual time, but um, in the grand scheme of things, even though there's a bunch of holy shit do stuff that happened, um, in the in the grand scheme of things, there wasn't a lot, you know. Yeah. So it was a lot. Of, a lot of uh, you know going over the same plot lines over and over again with. Yes, Heather still has Carly in the stables. You know, the kids doing the chupacabra thing. Uh, you know, drama over Sabrina and the baby. It's just same stuff over and over and over and over and over again. And now we have Victor Cassadine again. Woo! Woo! This is, it's gonna be interesting. Very, very much so. Um, and if you want to see what he was like back in the 80s, look up the Ice Princess story on YouTube. I know it should still be archived there. Uh, so if you want to see more of him before we see more of him in the coming weeks. So um, so we're going to get out of here for this week. Again, it's a short episode, but eh, that happens sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. some weeks will be longer, some weeks will be shorter. Um, if you want, I, I actually wouldn't mind having somebody from the show actually come on here. And we could do like like maybe a short interview and get their thoughts over what happened this particular week. You know, for a particular week, rather. So it would be it would be interesting if you have ideas. You know, let us know. You know who you would like to see. Um, you know, you can refer to them either by character or by actor. You know, we'll you know we'll be able to figure out who you're talking about. Between the two of us, we can do that. <laughs> yes. Oh, so 
with that, we're getting out of here. Uh, if you want to find me on social media, you can find me at Gomer21XX on Twitter. You can also find me at RTGomer.com and NerdVice.com. And because, well, guys got to make a living and put the foods in the mouths and the everything, uh, I do have the Patreon page. If you if you pledge five dollars or more, you get you know you get a name on the shout out page that's on the site that is up on the site now. Um, and if you donate ten dollars or more, then uh, you'll be able to hear these episodes, you know, early because they typically go up a day or two after I finish rendering them, which with this powerful computer doesn't take very long. But if you donate ten dollars or more, you get to see them early. So it, it's basically ten dollars, and you don't have to wait. Um, I'm I'm trying to come up with with more things for for patrons. It's just a pain in the ass. I know I have somebody who's been offering. I kind of want to talk to her a little bit more about that but um but yeah so that that'll be that'll be a thing and and if you do patreon and you do do me on patreon or, or what have you it is a monthly thing so it's not like you're gonna go broke if you do it so it's like five ten dollars a month i've got two of them one one of five one ten and they're the you know they're not gonna go broke anytime soon because it's only monthly um mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I know it's kind of a little bit of mon- monetarily e-begging, but uh, part of the money, once once it gets built up enough, uh, I'm going to get new equipment because you hear my microphone. Yeah, I, I could use an upgrade. So, uh, And then, of course, it'll come back into the shows. There'll be better shows and everything. So that's where a good, mo- a good amount of that money will go. You know? you know, Besides the obvious, you know, living expenses, which that really should go without saying if there's enough, you know. Yes. But, um... But yeah, any money that's possible, it'll go right back into the show. Um, more likely now, because I'm in a position to where living expenses are relatively low for me. But you know, it, it goes back into the more professional stuff, and I'm and I'm just blabbing on about it. So, uh, where can we find you, Namio? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn. Uh, you can find me on Tumblr. I have a Namio's Corner Tumblr. Uh, you can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com, what? which is even more awesome these days because we have new contributors. Yes, Woo! which which if you want to hear me talk a little bit more about them, you'll need to catch the next Thespian Talk after this one, which this should go up Sunday, and if recording schedules work out, the new Thespian Talk should be up Monday. So it, hopefully... Oh, hopefully you'll be up on time. You'll hear me talk about them then. I, I think we mentioned one or two of them the last time, but um, we'll talk a little bit more about them on that one. So, uh, so yeah. And I believe you also have the stained glass, which, by the way, yes. by the way, on the site, if you go up to the top of any page, look under the Buy Our Stuff tab, you can find her store there. Mm, yep, I'm on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. Yes. So again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Namio, signing off.